Hey guys, Rolando Rodriguez here with xgains.com. We've got workouts that work, easy to satisfy, and everything else you need to reach your lifestyle goals. So today I want to make a video concerning a article that I came across on the internet, and I'll do this from time to time, as many of you may already know. Uh, this article is called Skipping Breakfast Even Once a Week Might Increase Your Risk of Type 2 Diabetes. As many of you may already know, I skip breakfast on a regular basis and have for the last almost seven years, ever since I started intermittent fasting. Before that, though, I ate breakfast every single day. Breakfast was my favorite meal, and it still is my favorite meal, be it Cuban style or American style breakfast food. I love breakfast with a passion. Um, my mom actually made me breakfast every single day until the day I started my freshman year of college. So I love breakfast. I would wake up in the morning smelling whatever breakfast my mom was making for us. What I'm gonna do is just, you know, read the article out loud. I might read the whole paragraph or I might stop and talk about something if something really jumps out at me, but here we go. Many people consider breakfast to be the most important meal of the day, and perhaps that's for good reason. Skipping it might increase your type 2 diabetes risk according to a new review of several studies. I actually do think that breakfast is possibly the most important meal of the day, but it's about breaking the fast. It doesn't mean that you have to eat breakfast at a certain time or right after waking up, and that's where the article and myself are gonna not really see eye to eye, plus on a number of other things that they discuss. So anyways, continuing the article, it says, after looking at a total of six studies involving over 96,000 people, 5,000 of whom had already been diagnosed with type two diabetes, so like 91,000 people technically, German researchers found that skipping breakfast for just one day of the week was associated with a 6% higher risk of developing diabetes. So you skip breakfast one day a week, you're gonna have a 6% increase in the possibility of you know getting type two diabetes. 6% is not that big of a deal, but hold your horses. However, the risk went up with each additional day, peaking at a 55% higher risk of diabetes after skipping breakfast for four to five days each week. So if you skip breakfast four or five days a week, you're increasing your risk of getting type two diabetes by 55%. As many of you guys know, I've been intermittent fasting now for almost seven years. Protocol that I follow is typically an 18-6 where I fast for 18 hours a day and I eat for six hours a day. I personally break my fast at 3 p.m. and then I stop eating at 9 p.m. So I wake up in the morning, I train fasted first thing around 5 a.m., done working out around 7 a.m. and I do not eat until 3 p.m. that day. Sometimes, two days out the week about, I'll wait and I won't eat until dinner the next day. So I have my dinner, wake up in the morning, train fasted, and I might not eat until dinner the next day. Following this protocol, guys, I've been able to gain lean muscle mass and or fat and lose lean muscle mass and or fat. So it all depends on what I eat while I'm eating. All that being said, last seven years skipping breakfast on a regular basis, guys, I'll skip breakfast at least 355 days out of the year. And I'm not skipping breakfast for weeks at a time, but for months, sometimes six, seven, eight months at a time where I'll go without eating breakfast and my A1C has actually dropped down 1.2 points from where it was when I used to eat breakfast on a regular basis. Now, yes, I was obese. I had metabolic syndrome. I was pre-diabetic. I had hypertension, all these other things. But the case being, I was eating less calories at that weight and I was eating breakfast on a regular basis and I had all those issues. So even if you wanna talk about the fact that, yeah, well, you used to be obese, now you're not, so you reduce your health risk factors, fine. But one of the tools that I utilized to help me reduce my body weight and to get my health back on track was to stop eating breakfast and it did not increase my chances of getting type two diabetes but instead reverse them greatly. So let's continue. Breakfast is meant to break the fast. After a night of sleep, registered dietitian uh, Delina Soto told ABC News, when you eat breakfast, it jumpstarts the body's metabolism and changes the way it uses sugar. Rather than 
storing sugar in fat cells, the body begins using it for energy. As this sugar passes through the blood, the pancreas begins secreting the hormone insulin, which regulates blood sugar. In daily life, this process is make it easier for you to manage your appetite and hunger levels throughout the day. We're gonna be on this uh, paragraph for a little bit. First of all, breakfast is meant to break fast. Absolutely, I agree with that. But she says, after a night of sleep, uh, but you don't have to eat breakfast right when you wake up. Sleep counts as part of the fast, as I've mentioned a number of times on this channel. When you eat breakfast, it jump starts the body's metabolism and changes the way it uses sugar. Here's the thing. It's not going to change the way your body uses sugar because our bodies all use sugar the same way. But when you wake up and you are fasted, you're utilizing the sugar that is stored in your liver and or the sugar that's floating around in your bloodstream, right? Your blood sugar. Your blood sugar drops, your liver is gonna release some of the sugar that it has to increase the levels of sugar in your blood so that your blood sugar levels are regulated. So if you wake up and you are not eating, your body is utilizing the sugar that it has in its blood and in its liver. When that gets depleted, your body is going to switch its metabolism to fat, which is what we want to do. We want to burn fat, right? Why? Because as I just mentioned, when I lost weight, the lower your body fat percentage, the lower your risk of type two diabetes, not to mention the fact that we just wanna lose fat for all the other health reasons and visual reasons that we wanna look and feel better. So if you wake up and you're already fasted and you stay in a fasted state, the longer you can stay in that fasted state, the more your metabolism will be tapping into the fat stores in your body. The moment you break your fast with sugary breakfasts like they do in the United States or high protein breakfasts, depending on how much protein you eat, you are going to be releasing insulin as is mentioned in this paragraph, but we will get there, okay? So she talks about your metabolism changing, the way it uses sugar. Yeah, you are currently using the sugar that's in your body. Now you are going to be utilizing the sugar that you eat from breakfast. That's not really what we wanna do, especially if you're not depleting the sugar that you have stored in your muscles and or the sugar that you have in your liver. Because if you have excess sugar, it will be stored as fat. Is that the metabolic change that we want? To stop using the sugar that we have in our system and start either storing the sugar that we just ate as fat? Or do we want to allow our body to use the sugar it has in the system already? Anyways, rather than storing sugar in fat cells, the body begins using it for energy. No, because if you haven't eaten and you're fasted, your body's not gonna be storing the sugar that it has floating around in its blood system or stored in your muscle or in your liver to convert to fat because your body needs that to do other things. So it's, this article's almost shooting itself in the foot right there. As this sugar passes through the blood, the pancreas begins secreting the hormone insulin, which regulates blood sugar. We talked about that, that is true. And if you become insulin resistant, you're gonna, it leads to type two diabetes. Meaning if your body does not release the amount of insulin it needs and or your body is not reacting to the proper amount of insulin that your body is releasing to store and pull the sugar out of your blood system, then you are increasing your chances of type two diabetes. But anyways, um, to continue, in daily life, this process makes it easier for you to manage your appetite and hunger levels throughout the day. The process being the fact that your body releases insulin to remove the sugar that's floating in your blood, which just came from the food that you ate. If you didn't eat that food, your body wouldn't release the insulin. So you're becoming actually more insulin sensitive than insulin resistant. And insulin resistant means your body is resistant or is not reacting to the insulin that you're releasing, which does lead to type two diabetes. But if you eat less sugar, or you're actually fasting for longer periods of time, or you're skipping breakfast, you might actually become more insulin sensitive, which is the reverse of becoming insulin resistant, which leads to type two diabetes. So it's crazy. Now it says here that this process of the insulin being released makes it easier for you to manage your appetite and hunger levels throughout the day. N not really. 
Okay, if you're fat adapted, meaning you can use the fat that's on your body, that's how you control your appetite and hunger levels throughout the day. If you eat breakfast and you overeat on the sugar or the protein, our body doesn't understand how much sugar we're actually consuming. So it just dumps insulin. If it dumps too much insulin, it's gonna pull too much sugar from your bloodstream. And now your blood glucose level drops and guess what happens? You become hungry, physically hungry because your brain says, oh crap, we don't have enough sugar in our blood system. We need to eat something to remedy this situation as soon as possible. So the insulin dump, releasing insulin, if you release too much, could actually make your appetite and hunger go up. Let's continue. Both types of diabetes make it difficult for your body to control the amount of sugar in your blood. But for type 2 diabetes, the most common form of diabetes, the body develops a resistance to insulin, which we just discussed. When left unchecked by insulin, blood sugar rises to abnormally high levels, putting the patient at risk for complications affecting the heart, nerves, eyes, and kidneys due to the condition known as hyperglycemia, too much sugar in the blood. But we discussed that paragraph. Previous research has found that obesity is a risk factor of type 2 diabetes as I mentioned a couple of times already. However, the meta-analysis found that a person's body mass index was only partially associated with diabetes risk in people who skipped breakfast. So pretty much if you skip breakfast, how much fat you had on your system was only partially related to your type 2 diabetes increased risk, which is sort of what I discussed earlier, that just losing the weight I don't think was enough for me to change the risk associated with type 2 diabetes, but let's continue. This suggests that there are other factors that play a role in diabetes risks, and that people of any weight may face an increased risk of diabetes if they skip breakfast. I have been skipping breakfast on a regular basis for seven years, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months at a time, and I have reduced my A1C 1.2 points from where it was. So I have reduced my risk of type 2 diabetes when it comes to that uh, metric. Skipping breakfast has been linked to increased levels of cholesterol and inflammation in the blood. That is, that's actually true which can make the body more resistant to insulin and derail the body's ability to regulate blood sugar according to previous research. They don't really mention cortisol here, but that is the flight or fight, the stress hormone, and that can make you a little bit more insulin resistant because if your cortisol levels increase, you're gonna have some inflammation, a little bit more inflammation in your body anyways. But if you are teaching your body to handle the stress that fasting provides, then you will sort of self-regulate the amount of cortisol that is released due to your fasting. And the longer you fast, the less inflammation you have in your body. So it's almost pick your poison. I found that I'm able to lose more weight, maintain a healthier body composition when skipping breakfast. So the cortisol increase is doing less damage than the insulin increase. And based off of what I've found, for the minimal increase in cortisol due to fasting, I think that's a better bet than increasing your insulin level on a regular basis in terms of longevity. So on to the next paragraph. When eating breakfast, consider a balanced meal that's high in fiber and low in added sugar and processed meats. Okay, cool. High in fiber, low in added sugar. But added sugar does not mean that you are not going to be eating something that's full of sugar, especially in America. Cool, you're controlling your added sugar, but the normal breakfast that we eat in America, yes, it has a ton of added sugar, but if we were to move the products that had added sugar, we'd still be eating a bunch of sugar. The insulin level would probably still spike high enough where we might do two insulin dumps and thus increasing our chance of reducing the amount of blood glucose actually floating in our blood so much that we're gonna actually get hungry again. Sorry. So Soto suggests oatmeal with milk and fruit. Oatmeal is sugar, fruit is sugar. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what I just said before continuing to read that sentence. Or a veggie omelet with a side of whole grain toast. I don't care if it's whole grain, it's still sugar. In our body, we're still gonna have to release insulin 
to remove the sugar once we do break it down from our blood system. So whole grain or not, it's sugar. Yes, controlling the added sugar will make a difference, but how much of a difference? These meals will keep you full for longer, and Soto said that they are the perfect balance of carbohydrates, protein, and fresh produce. She didn't even mention fat. If you're fasting and you put your body in a fat burning mode and you give it fat, it's already burning fat. When you introduce sugar or carbohydrates, your body has to switch over to processing those carbs. She didn't even mention fat. It sounded like she was gonna mention the three macronutrients. She said these meals will keep you full for longer uh, and as they are the perfect balance of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. No, fresh produce. Fresh produce, I think, is okay. It's, uh, much rather someone eat the actual fruit than drink the fruit juice every day of the week, okay? But she doesn't even mention fats here. The first breakfast that she suggests is oatmeal with milk and fruit. And she's probably, she didn't say it here, but a low fat, in America, they'll have low fat milk. So it's like oatmeal sugar, fruit sugar. Milk has some sugar in it. Hopefully if it's whole milk, at least they're getting some of the fat. Or a veggie omelet, the eggs do have fat and protein with a side of whole grain toast. Toss that toast out the window. I mean, I, you know, we're, we're not getting into the fact that if you were to have this breakfast later in the day, but if you were to have this breakfast later in the day, later in the day, you'd be burning more fat, like I just mentioned. So if you are introducing a breakfast that's higher in fat, lower in carbohydrates, period, not just added sugar, then you're going to end up burning more fat that day than if you were to introduce a breakfast that was predominantly based on carbohydrates. I don't care if it's multigrain. I don't care if it's complex. The glycemic index has been shown to differ from different people. And in the end, you're gonna have to be storing those sugars that were released, as I mentioned before. So yes, breakfast, when you break your fast, is extremely important. But fasting does not lead to a higher risk of type two diabetes, especially if you're following, and here's where most of you probably knew where I was getting to, a low carb diet. Because you're not having these insulin spikes throughout the day, which they mention as something that you need in the morning to regulate your sugar throughout the day. What are they talking about? Your sugar's regulated when you wake up. It's low. People are addicted to sugar. So they don't wanna feel that withdrawal symptom of the little slight headache. They do that for two days, your body's gonna regulate itself and you're gonna get past that. And you're gonna realize that you don't need sugar when you wake up. And when you become fat adapted, you don't have to eat breakfast immediately. People in America don't understand what it means to be hungry and we're constantly eating. And that, in my opinion, is increasing the insulin levels on a regular basis, which causes us to become insulin resistant, which increases our risk of type two diabetes. So my bet would always be on skipping breakfast. So anyways, a bunch of stuff we discussed here, a bunch of stuff that got me upset, but I don't think that skipping breakfast will increase your risk of type 2 diabetes, especially if you're already there. If what you're doing has already got you to the point where you're pre-diabetic, then try something else, right? It worked for me. In the end, guys, everybody is different, but I don't think it's an increase of 55%, not even close, especially if in this study, they were giving people carbohydrate sugar-filled breakfasts, even if it wasn't added sugar. What they're suggesting is a good breakfast, has a lot of sugar, isn't even talking about fat. So I can't take this study seriously. Anyways, that's it for now. This is Rolando Rodriguez with xgains.com. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Please like, subscribe, and share to this channel if you haven't done so already. I greatly appreciate it. The website again is x dash. That's the symbol, not the word gains.com. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Peace.